Hi friends, it's me. I I just want to share my story of the struggles of being pregnant with a fibroid. I was diagnosed with fibroids long ago, probably, I don't know, 10 years ago, just because of how much how many issues I had during my periods so I they had an, I had an ultrasound and they found several fibroids that were like this tiny they were really really small um, now the video is about the struggles of pregnancy and fibroids one of those fibroids grew up grew a lot as the pregnancy advanced so I just want to share my story. Uh, I had looked everywhere. Of course, whenever you're pregnant and you have fibers and you already know that you start kind of searching and I just couldn't find visuals of it. I mean, there's obviously I'm not the first one and I'm not going to be the last one with fibroids, but I just wanted to see, you kind of want to see. And that is what I want to do with this video. I'm actually going to be very graphic and, and I'm going to um, edit and put some pictures of the fibroid so that you guys can see and maybe include some videos uh, during the pregnancy since week 24 I started having Braxton Hicks and I didn't I mean I had it every single day since week 24 until I deliver and as the pregnancy progressed um, and the belly was like tighter and the fibroid was growing you could see because you know uh braxton hicks will kind of you know put everything like together like squeezed and then the fiber kind of will pop would pop out and it was it was not it didn't look good at all people would think all the time that it was the baby's head and it wasn't it was actually the fiber that is how big it was at the end it was like the same size of the baby's head I ended up having a c-section because of the fibroid and the location of the fibroid not the fibroid itself but where it was located it was in the lower part like very close to the cervix and it was kind of blocking babies way out um, he pretty much had it as a pillow uh, at the end of the pregnancy whenever baby was head down and I never felt the baby all the way down and even though that was not uh, something the doctor told me I'm going to guess that it was because the fiber was there and didn't let the baby kind of went all the way down even though he was heads down um, I don't know since week 33 34 um, I couldn't necessarily feel his head down there because of the fibroid during the pregnancy the fibroids start growing and they were starting to do monitoring on it like kind of check it every time i had ultrasounds and i had more ultrasounds because of the fibroid and it got to a point that they couldn't even see the whole thing they were measured all the time and they it got to a point that it was so big that they just couldn't measure it was like outside of the visual of the ultrasound of how big the thing was um every time I had the Braxton Hick it it would hurt that area where I had the fibroid it was tender since it was down when I would sit um, it'll be kind of tender and painful to rest to put like my legs or rest uh, my weight on it um, that, that that is what I experienced during the pregnancy it was scary it was scary to have that because you would always I was always thinking if it was affecting the baby's growth if it was affecting baby's development um, thank God it didn't I mean baby was very good size and very good weight he was 18.5 inches and he weighed um, he weighed like six six point six pounds so he was he was not a big baby but he was not tiny either and the fiber was not necessarily affecting his development he's a perfectly healthy baby but it was pretty scary it was pretty scary to you know go every um 
appointment and to realize that that thing was growing and growing and growing and besides just being so scared of this thing growing as fast as it was it was scared to think that it was gonna stay inside of me I had to go to the high-risk doctor and they was just they were just saying that they were just saying that they will monitor it like just see how things were going they were not gonna let me go they didn't let me go past 39 weeks I delivered 39 weeks one day uh, because a c-section because of the location of the of the fibroid I was scared too thinking since it was very low um, that whenever they cut they were gonna kind of punch the fibroid and that is very risky because you have high risk of bleeding so I mean pretty much everything was very scary thinking about a fibroid and I'm just wanting to vent how I felt I mean it is just being scared of you bleeding to death during delivery it is the scary part thinking that is going to affect the baby's development the scary part thinking that that thing is going to stay there high risk doctor mentioned that it was growing because of the hormone levels of the pregnancy and that it was very likely for that to shrink back uh, after all the pregnancy hormones were like out of my body but it is certainly very scary to kind of guess and wait if that is actually the reason the the fiber was growing and if it was going to you know shrink back to a normal size you would never know and I would never know because thank God during my c-section my doctor decided that it was a good idea to take it out and she actually did and I'm super relieved super happy that she did it because it was something that I was asking every single appointment can you just do it and do let's do a c-section and take this thing out let's do a c-section and take this thing out uh, but she was always very cautious and conservative just telling me that it was not a good idea to do it during the c-section that maybe I'll have to have surgery after it uh, to remove it just because of all the blood that you have the additional blood that you kind of have in the body during the pregnancy anyways the thing is that and I know I'm super scattered with the video but bear with me um, with the story I ended up having the fibroid taken out and it was huge it was 11 ounces and it was a huge thing like this the like size of the baby's head pretty much and she took it out I'm going to say that post surgery my scar is a little bit longer on the side on my right side where that fiber was located uh, I'm guessing she had to go a little bit further to kind of get it out my recovery I haven't I mean this is my first c-section ever I don't know how long people usually take to re recoup but for me um, I would say that it was a little bit long that area um, stayed tender longer than like the rest of my body and the uh, recovering from the surgery from the incision like the scar the tenderness the sensitivity that area still a little bit sensitive my baby is almost three months already and I'm still very I'm a little bit sensitive on that area it was huge I cannot even imagine how much she had to dig to take it out but I mean she did it um, my doctor I'm saying um, I'm super thankful that it was that way because seriously at this point if I still had the thing in it would be like a huge like if I was bloated and probably looking I don't know four months pregnant of how big that thing was it is something just trying to not answer questions because nobody's asking me anything but kind of trying to answer the questions that I had when I was kind of searching 
through the web, through YouTube, um, searching for other people's stories to see what I was getting myself into. Um, it is very scary. If it's the hormones, the, the pregnancy hormones will trigger uh, some of the fibroids to grow. How fast? It all depends on you. It's something very personal. Um, usually your doctor is not going to want to take it out uh, right away just because of the amount of blood that you have in your system, the amount of extra blood that you have in your system during pregnancy. A uh, fibroid removal um, is very risky in terms of bleeding. So the pregnancy itself with all the blood that you have plus the fibroid is like double the risk of of bleeding so it is very risky usually they will want to take it out um, in a separate surgery to have more control over it uh, there's always a chance that those uh, fibroids will shrink back um, after pregnancy once all those hormones are like out of your system but that is always something that you have to wait and see uh, my high-risk doctor told me that it could take up to three months or even six months for that to go back to a normal size whatever normal is for them for me is like not having a belly that would be normal so it's always like kind of a guessing game to to think is this thing gonna go back to the normal size um, other thing that I wanted to share too is that during the pregnancy, since I had Braxton Hicks from week 24, um, every time I had Braxton Hicks, that thing will kind of pop out. It was very scary to see it. It was kind of tender, and that is something some footage that I wanted to I want to add to the video so that. Um, you guys can see how it looked um, because if I was just walking normally you necessarily wouldn't be able to see the fiber like kind of the roundness of the belly will kind of cover all of it but if I was having a Braxton Hicks then yeah you would see that huge mass bulging out it was it was something um, overall I would say like if you have issues with your regular period before getting pregnant um, just push your doctor to have an ultrasound to check if you have fibroids just to know um, in case you get pregnant um, how to figure it out how to monitor this thing since I knew that I have fibroids I was very specific telling my doctor that I knew I had fibroids and I wanted to know what were the risks during the pregnancy for me and for the baby and I was making sure that they would monitor that they will check the size of it measure it every time I was going with the Braxton Higgs I was always pushing my doctor to to make sure that I was not dilating before time because then I was kind of scared saying okay what is gonna happen am I gonna bleed to death if I have a natural delivery taking in consideration that location of my fiber that it was like very low kind of blocking the the cervix the baby's exit way exit canal so i was always kind of pushing my doctor to have that monitor make sure that they were very knowledgeable about the location of the fiber the size of the fiber and the rate that it was growing just to make sure that whenever it was time to deliver the baby they had everything not an under control because you cannot control a surgery necessarily but to have everything kind of placed ready just in case of an emergency um, overall having a fibroid it's not necessarily um, a reason not to get pregnant or to have issues during the pregnant but during the pregnancy but it is definitely a reason to tell your doctor to monitor it during the whole pregnancy and make sure that they whoever is gonna deliver your baby knows 
everything there is to know about a fibroid in case you have an emergency c-section in case you're bleeding uh, more than the usual bleeding that a birth uh, birthing experience can bring mm, just so that you are you know calm and relaxed and you can actually enjoy your birthing experience for me I during the c-section I was entertained by my husband during the whole procedure uh, my doctor was very calm the whole staff of the hospital was they all know what they're doing so that made me feel really reassured that I was gonna be okay and at the end of the surgery when the doctor told me that she was able to get it out it was like you know the cherry uh, on top of everything um, because I was super happy you know I just had a baby that was perfectly fine and then I didn't have this fiber to worry about after um, recovering from a c-section so pretty much that is everything I wanted to share I know I'm a little scared in my story I'll get better in the future I'll promise um, but for now that is what I wanted to share how was my experience during the Braxton Hicks during the birth uh, during the pregnancy itself with the fibroid and just to let you know, to show you pictures of how it looked, that things can be controlled, things can go out, turn out really well, that it is okay to be scared, but it is good to use that scary part of it to make sure that your doctor knows everything. Now, if you don't have a doctor, then you make sure to tell the hospital people or your doula or your, um, I don't remember whoever is going to help you uh, give birth that they know what you have just to be prepared of possible complications anyways I'm going to stop babbling stuff here um, thank you for watching uh, if I feel that I have more to share about this fiber I will for sure make another small video about it but thank you for watching Bye.